Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Welcome dear learners this is a video for the subject of education for the course of bachelors of education and for the paper of educational technology part 2 this module will be discussing about the communication and interaction and the present lecture will be on the types of communication this lecture is being recorded by dr iram khan the course coordinator and the presenter of this video is dr iram khan from jamia millia islamia new delhi the academic expert or the reviewer of this video is professor jesse abraham from jamia millia islamia new delhi this video is produced under the project dts swayam prabha channels of ministry of education government of india hello dear students i am dr iram khan assistant professor at institute of advanced studies in education faculty of education jamia millia islamia new delhi today we will be discussing about communication and interaction and in this lecture the focus will be on the types of communication let us start the discussion first with the objectives the objectives of this session are to discuss the various situations of making communication and to elaborate the different types of communication along with their significance respectively so first of all let us see that what are the different type of situations in which communication can happen there may occur a variety of situations or environments in the process of communication where uh, a lot of individuals are involved or maybe one or uh, uh, individual is interacting with another at a time so whenever there is interaction we can say that some sort of communication is happening let us see that how we can categorize or group the different types of communications with respect to the situation of the communication the first one which i wish to discuss here is one to one communication what do we mean by one to one communication basically the one to one communication takes place between two individuals most of our day to day informal and formal communications which occur um, in in the daily life uh, can be categorized under this form and we can uh, cite an example when a father is talking to his son or uh, his daughter or maybe a teacher is talking to one of the students so here this is one sort of communication which can be considered as one to one communication the next type of communication can be considered as the small group communication what exactly it means the small group communication occurs in both formal and informal ways and it can happen among the members of small group uh which can consist of uh, more than two individuals and let us take the example when uh the parent like one of the parent the father is talking to uh, two of uh, his uh, children or mother is talking to uh, two of his uh, sorry two of her sisters so in this way we can say that here small group communication is happening maybe uh, when uh, there is a, a group of children uh, of a family let's take the example of uh, four or five children and uh, one of the family members uh, let's take the example of gra the grandfather the grandfather is talking to all the children of the family maybe four or five children then also it can be considered as the small group communication so this was the second type then let us take the example of uh, uh, another or you can uh, say that let us discuss the next type which is the large group or public communication public communication involves a large number of people or individuals maybe in a group and it can be uh, seen when one person is interacting to a large group of people it is usually conducted in an uh, organized or formal way otherwise if it is not formal then what ha what will happen uh, there may be some sort of chaos and people will not in a position to understand what what exactly the person is saying uh, let us take the example of this one uh, the large group or public communication it can be exemplified as when the teacher one teacher is uh, is uh, 
in a classroom and she is teaching to a group of students let's take uh, 50 or 60 students at a time or maybe the games teacher is uh, uh, getting some activity done or maybe any any of the teachers is getting some activities done by the students or maybe the head of the school is interacting with all the students at a time so this is uh, the example of large group or public communication the next is organizational or institutional communication what exactly we mean by this the organizational communication is carried out within the four walls of different organizations or institutions maybe a factory or an industrial establishment or maybe it can um, be a government office or uh, army or in a hospital or also in in case of a school or college where um, any of uh, such type of educational institutions so whatever interactions are happening inside the organization or the institution it can be considered as the institutional communication and we can see that every time in these institutions there is a particular style and functioning of this type of communication and it is quite formal systematic planned and organized it is having its innate style in which the uh, people who are working inside the uh, this particular organization or uh, institution will be interacting with each other then comes the most important which is considered as mass communication mass communication is something where interaction with masses happen mass communication can be taken up as a very important uh, part of the systems of communication the range field and application of mass communication is very much wide and extensive it is carried out through different types of mechanical means appliances and mass media and uh, these can be any uh, of um, those devices which we are using nowadays like the radio television or uh, we use uh, several like we go on different platforms and see the, the those videos we also go to cinema halls and watch movies there are many uh, film clips which are available even on different social media platforms we also read books and uh, different literature newspapers magazines uh, there are several uh, other publications journals uh, we also go for doing certain uh, sort of uh, networking in the form of emailing with the help of internet and also internet is helping us out in doing all those teleconferencing and video call conferencing um, things and uh, this is this is happening because of the satellite communication and the transmission process and here we can see that we don't have any direct face to face natural communication between the sender and the receiver yet it is the only way to reach the masses with a very meaningful uh, way and uh, we can impart the meaningful messages which are full of information and education with utmost economy and effectiveness and any organization or institution or individual can communicate the thoughts of that particular human being or the institution even these uh, philosophies the feelings intentions and even in case of several programs uh, we can communicate we can advertise we can tell people about uh, that particular program or uh, regarding anybody else's feeling and a huge number of individuals or groups within within no time lapse will be uh, in a position to uh, to get to know what is uh, being communicated and this is only possible because of the mass media and it has resulted in the globalization of the humanity we, we have seen that now uh, whatever is happening in one country the other country knows within no time and this is because of the globalization of the press and even the expansion of mass media so in a single moment we can communicate to the masses residing in any corner of the world through the sophisticated modern means and it has resulted in the development of proper channels 
for carrying out the task of distance education and fulfilling the duties of providing the required information to those who ask for uh, the need, like who ask for some sort of help or who are in need. So the masses can send their responses to the source through their right, like the, to the chat uh, box comments, or they can even email the person who is uh, interacting with the masses. And in this way, even the feedback can be given and uh, the question answer can also be asked. And in this way, we can find that there are some sort of actions or some sort of interactions. Interactivity can also be obtained in the mass media. And uh, this is uh, somehow a boon for our culture and for our society. So after all those situations of communication, let us now focus on the classroom communication. Because the purpose of a discussion on communication is to see that how the classroom process, the teaching learning process is having this important aspect of communication at the focal point or at the center. So the small group, uh, which is involving 20 to 50 or 60 students in a class represents the classroom communication environment of most of our schools. And uh, this can be seen uh, in veracity. You can go for uh, seeing that there are 20 students uh, in one class in a, one particular school. And in few of the cases, you can find that 50 to 60 students are sitting in a class. And uh, both in case of a theory or in a practical class, you can find the same sort of audiences. So classroom communication is mostly carried out through either verbal or through non-verbal means. And we can say that nothing like both of these means uh, are not going to run in isolation. Uh, we always see that if the verbal communication is happening, then also some sort of non-verbal means are going to work. And in this discussion, we will uh, try to understand that what exactly these uh, different means, which are verbal and non-verbal, are all about. So the communication in which we make use of the oral or written form of language is termed as verbal communication and on the other hand uh, we can also communicate our feelings and uh, our emotions our thoughts uh, whatever we want to express through non-verbal means without or maybe at times with making any use of verbal or written language like in case of written language even we can use some certain signs and symbols so it will become a kind of non-verbal. Let us just try to see that what exactly these two uh, like broad categories of communication means are. Let us focus on verbal communication. So language is the key here in this case of verbal communication. Each society develops one or more form of languages with spoken or written words for communicating with each other. We can find that whenever we go to one place in our country or to the other, we can find that there are various type of accents, dialects and certain languages which are uh, being spoken. And uh, in this way, we can say that we have got regular uh, uh, la language which is being spoken in uh, different parts of the country, which can be considered as local language, vernacular language or maybe regional uh, traditional language, national and international languages. And for this, what exactly for all these languages and all are required, these are all for making communications. So the basic unit of any language are words. So units can be words in any of those cases. If we talk about any of the language, words are going to be the unit. And then the sentences, which are governed by the rules of the grammar, and that grammar will be according to the uh, that particular language. So language can make use of one of the three forms. What are these three forms? The first one is oral. Then we have got written. And then the next one is oral and written, both, like the mix of both. So in the oral form, one can communicate one's feelings, thoughts and intentions to others by the way of speaking. And then the next person is going to listen. So there will be speaking and listening channel. 
and for this purpose the sender or the communicator makes use of some precise and distinct sounds which when uh, the other person hears or uh, is listened by uh, like listened by the other person uh, or the receiver the decoding happens and once the decoding like after the encoding decoding happens and then after decoding is happened the receiver understands the meaning which the person is willing to say then next is the written form in the written form of language uh, or um, in the written form of the language communication the communicator or the sender makes use of the script of the language script the way in which we write like we write uh, hindi in devnagari script or if we are uh, trying to write punjabi then we must be using gurumukhi or in in case of english we we would be using the english script for the communication of thoughts and feelings a person writes about it through some written mode and for for writing we are going to use a pen or a pencil or if we are using a board blackboard or whiteboard we we might be using a marker or a chalk so and even in case of uh, if we go with uh, for uh, for a broader uh, way when uh, we can find the written script we can see that the print media uses a big and sophisticated printing machines and uh, the person at the receiving end understands the meaning of the communicated message or whatever thought is being expressed in written form by reading and after reading the decoding happens so when i as a sender is like i am if i am writing something i am making an encoding and the person who is uh, reading that particular script is basically trying to decode and then uh, after decoding the understanding happens so this is the next form then in the usual classroom communication what happens we can just uh, uh, see or imagine any of the classes a teacher while writing on the blackboard the teacher also makes use of some sort of language she used to speak up she used to explain things and while the making this explanation the teacher used to draw some diagram or write some words or uh, some some sort of uh, uh, terminologies or con like all those uh, concepts which the teacher is being uh, uh, like uh, is being taught and the teacher is trying to explain so the Uh, in this particular method the exposition of the written content as well the uh, the oral uh, conversation is both are happening at the same time so in this way the oral form combined with written form of communication or vice versa always proves more effective than any of these forms if used separately so it can be said that if we are using both the forms mixing the oral and written communication at the same time in a classroom that will be the best uh, way of communicating uh, the the uh, whatever we are trying to explain as a teacher let us now come to the non verbal communication exactly the non verbal communication means the communication process can also be carried out without the use of any verbal means in many cases like if we uh, see that uh, like when we are communicating with uh, somebody who is not able to uh, hear or uh, somebody who is not in a position to see or a person who is uh, mentally retarded or the person who is not uh, in in a, in a normal case when a person Uh, is not knowing the language of the sender or if i am speaking in hindi and in front of me there is a person who is not knowing hindi a tamil speaking uh, person is in front of me obviously the person will not in a position to understand whatever i am saying so here in this particular case when we are interacting to such an audience we require some sort of coding 
or some sort of uh, symbolic expression coded symbolic expressions where we can uh, we can transfer the message to the receiver but because of this language bias this language barrier basically not bias basically language barrier we have to communicate whatever we are trying to say without the use of written or oral language so it may become a necessity as well as compulsion to make use of the non verbal communication when this sort of uh, situation is in front of us so in the normal situations uh, even while talking we used to make uh, certain sort of uh, actions or gestures or mannerisms and that is something which is the part of a human beings uh, way of talking this non verbal media is generally used for giving strength and effectiveness to the verbal communication like right now when i am talking i am using my like uh, automatically the hands are being used and when i am trying to making an emphasis emphasis on a particular word maybe i would be using a uh, particular action or my eye movements are also somehow uh, more focused or uh, you can see that even the facial gestures are changing so all these are the part of the non verbal communication so let us try to see that what are those uh, important non verbal communication means or uh, what are the most important uh, aspects which can be seen when we are trying to understand the non verbal communication the first one which i wish to discuss here is the facial expression because uh, we talk when we talk the entire face is being read by the person who is watching to us Who is who is in front of us and to whom the communication is being happened? So facial expression may very well communicate it, or uh, like it can communicate our feelings, our thoughts, uh, the state of mind in which we are in, the intentions which we are having um, as a communicator. So in general, the face and the facial expressions may be said to be a true index or a, a kind of mirror. of a person's emotional and thinking behavior so when one person is uh, like uh, talking you can act by watching to his or her face you can make out that what is the intention or what state of mind this person is in so it is very easy to in identify that uh, is the person right now uh, in some sort of stress or anxiety or in a happy mood or in in a sad mood so similarly when one is in a kind of a very joyful mood his or her facial expressions are going to reflect that this person is in a good mood in a joyful mood so it may also be seen that much of the language of the facial expression is almost similar and universal to all around the world like when we are happy we try to smile like our faces are smiling or maybe we are laughing and we uh, the the tone even of our voice changes so that is that is something which can be seen whenever you go to some place you can find a a, a person who is smiling so you can say without any guess that okay this person is happy at the moment it's something which is generalized so this is uh, a very universal uh, activity which we can find in humans so seeing the facial expression we can easily conclude that a person is angry or uh, is jealous of something or a uh, person is surprised or astonished or maybe in fear or uh, if showing love or affection sympathy or hatred any any type of emotion can be uh followed once uh, once you see somebody's face while making any type of communication or even the person is not speaking up and then also you can uh, see to the face and you can make out that what exactly is the state of mind of this person so in this way the facial expression may be termed as one of the important modes of non verbal communication it is a very very important type of non verbal expression the next is the language of the eye you might be thinking of that how it is important 
it is very important. So language of the eye may be considered an another important mode of non-verbal communication. And uh, we can say that uh, like some somebody is if somebody is uh, being told that uh, you you have got speaking eyes. So uh, it is a kind of praise for him or her. So eyes are in fact uh, like they can very easily convey that what exactly is the intention of that particular communication by the person who is getting the communication done or the sender. So language of the eye may also be considered as common and universal to almost all the cultures and societies of the world. Uh, somehow it, it can also generalize generalize that if we are making our eyes smaller or maybe widened eyes, they are all having some sort of meanings which are universal for all the cultures uh, around the world. So the language of the eye movements is somewhat so universal and familiar that it is very easy and simple to decode the feelings, thoughts and intentions which are being conveyed by the communicator. So let us see that how like few of those examples when one turns his or her eyes we can conclude that this person is not interested in our friendship or maybe in the conversation which is happening and the person is willing to avoid avoid the conversation similarly if one um, one person is uh, like communicating well uh, and the uh, emotions or uh, of fear or maybe uh, any sort of anger enjoyment or greediness or temptation maybe love and affection empathy and uh, sympathy or any type of emotion invariably you can find through the eye language it can be the other human being will be in a position to make out by the eye language that what exactly is the state of mind just like the face eyes are the uh, most important tool of showing your emotions or state of mind so actually this eye to eye contact this forms the very basic of effective communication so when we are trying to communicate to our students and if we are not making eye to eye contact or if the student is not trying like looking into the eyes then we can understand that there is something which is troubling like there is something which is troubling in the mind of my student so when one's focus or uh, of uh, the eyes or this eye to eye contact while the conversation is not happening then you can actually think of that what exactly is the uh, the problem or maybe if you are in between a very important conversation and you are thinking of something else you are uh, um, your mind it, uh, is at some other place at that particular time your eye movement is going to say the person who is making the conversation that you are not listening to him or her so this is something which is uh, very much important to get the uh, the uh, goodwill of somebody, some somebody's likes or dislikes, because uh, if automatically if you are not uh, listening to a person, the person is not going to like you. So this is also one of a very important uh, way in which you can get the uh, like or dislike of the person who is being uh, who is being at the dais or making a communication. So in the classroom communication, the necessary interaction links between the teacher and the students are mostly maintained through the relative eye language. So the eye movements of the teacher may encourage or discourage a student in a given like well, if you the student is giving a response and you are uh, your eyes are not uh, uh, showing him that you are liking the response which he or she is giving then there is a possibility that this person this student is going to get discouraged and at the second time when you ask some question she or he is not going to participate or in that 
uh, or uh, not going to give the answer or not participate in the in the activity of teaching learning in an active way so this eye reading happens or uh, uh, the eye movements can be read by the students here for uh, of uh, of their teacher and even for the teacher the teacher can understand or read the eye movements of the students she can make out that what is exactly is the mood of a uh, a child or a or a student by seeing her or his eyes so this is again a very important tool which can be seen uh, as a very effective means to understand the classroom environment for a teacher the next is the body language our body language has a very impressive and uh, effective language for communicating our feelings our emotions our thoughts and even our actions like in case of a classical dancer while making a performance a dance performance on the stage she might uh, provide some sort of substantial proof of the effectiveness of the body movement and such communication though are, is going to use a lot of gestures postures and movements of the dancer's body parts and by seeing the this but particular body language you if you are in the audience you can make a conclusion you can actually conclude that how good the dancer is and now she is uh, like like what exactly she is trying to do by the dance moves you can make out that right now she is in the uh, move, this move is showing that uh, she is doing a prayer or she is uh, making uh, the gesture which is uh, related to uh, an animal figure or maybe she is also uh, showing some sort of love or affection or anxious behavior so different mudras or moves can be in a, like without saying anything this dancer can express that what particular emotion she is trying to convey so here you can see that the body language although it seems to be somewhat universal and common but it has a perfect cultural and social bar, like a kind of base some body language in one culture can be having some other meaning and in another culture or in another place a different part of the country or in, in the different part of the world we might see that that particular uh, body language would be having some other meaning some different meaning so as a result every culture or society has its own body language which can be learned uh, the same way as a spoken language is learned so uh, if there is a the meaning of uh, folding your hands is uh, for for making um, the namaste or uh, for greeting somebody maybe in one culture or in one religion that that is being used but maybe in another religion or in another culture that is not the symbol or not the body language which is being used so in this way we have to learn we have to actually acquire those uh, uh, those body language uh, uh, knowledge as we have to acquire the language the spoken language and in this way we can uh, we can be quite cautious while making the use of interpreting uh, or making any kind of body language uh, for the uh, for making any communication we have to see that what exactly is the meaning of that particular body language in that particular society and then only we can go ahead for uh, using that body language in for communicating what we are willing to communicate so happiness sadness or maybe love affection or uh, the feelings of sympathy empathy uh, like all those things can be uh, can be shown through various actions and movements and the body language can be very effectively used by the teachers and the students in the classroom for the healthy classroom interaction in almost all types of teaching learning situations the teachers may add 
colors and effectiveness to their explanations to uh, to different type of expositions and demonstration skills with the use of appropriate body language so we can say that like even once uh, the teacher is inside the classroom and she's uh, she is walking uh, throughout the class and trying to see that all the students even sitting at the back are also attentive and uh, showing uh, showing interest like taking interest uh, to the classroom uh, process and she is uh, she is actually uh, making an effort to see that whether the students are in uh, in the proper uh, mindset uh, of uh, of learning so this is somehow the classroom process which is getting affected here by the body language of a teacher so it is again a very important aspect of uh, the non verbal communication especially for the teachers next is the sound symbols there are many sound symbols and vocal cues uh, which also provide an effective medium for the desired communication let's take the example when we are saying or narrating or explaining something to somebody and the person to whom we are uh, we are narrating is responding simply by making a sound hmm hmm it may work well for maintaining the chain of communication so that nodding with a particular sound is going to give you the cue or the uh, the uh, like a proper understanding that the other person is listening to you is receiving the message so this hmm okay hmm this type of nodding or making sounds is some sort of symbolic representation or sound symbols we may uh, like properly visualize that uh, if a person is play, paying attention and agreeing to the message communication which is being told or uh, communicated to him or her uh, that particular sound of who is very important and in contrary when the listener uh, is uttering some sort of negative sound like mm -hmm, mm -hmm, that type of sound may be considered that this sound is is basically made when the person is not showing his or her agreement the, the the receiver is not in not basically showing his or her agreement to what exactly is being said so this means that the person is not taking interest the person is disinterested or in disagreement to the conveyed message so it becomes more distinctive and prominent when the person also nods his head and neck along with the utterance of the negative sound so if we i'm saying mm -hmm, mm -hmm. so what i exactly i'm doing but i'm i'm doing some sort of action which is trying to show that i'm not uh, in agreement uh, with whatever is being told to me similarly the utterance of the sound mm okay mm so this is with the nod of this this type of nod when i am shaking my uh, my face in this way and making hmm hmm what exactly i am trying to convey that yes i am in agreement with you so this is because it is accompanied with the tuning of the neck and twisting of the nose it is also being provided like this this is trying to provide a kind of signal of uh, of this particular sender to the receiver or receiver to the sender that this person who is in front of me is in agreement with whatever i am trying to say so this is somehow how the sound symbols work and there are in in numerable numerable number of sound symbols which we normally use in our daily life in addition to playing the role of a mediator or reinforcer 
in conversation the sound symbols or vocal cues may effectively act as potent carrier and conveyors of a person's thoughts and actions we can take an example when a person is making a pleasant sound through whistling or humming we may know that this person is in a pleasant and happy kind of mood and uh, uh, when the person utters hmm with anger like hmm and the person's face is uh, like showing some gestures which is in uh, like uh, showing the angry face or the tone is also basically uh, giving some sort of cue that this person is not in a good mood and maybe he or she can fight so the interpretation of the sound symbols can only be made in context to the tone to the volume and the situation which is prevailing at the time of the utterance of those sounds so this whistling may be made to tease or to attract or for making some sort of incident uh, to remark uh, making a remark to somebody or maybe uh, if if we are trying to praise somebody like we are uh, in a in a club or in a uh, uh, like a program is happening and uh, the dance performance is too good so we at times make a whistle to motivate the Uh, the performer so we can say that one particular sound can have various meanings so it depends on the tone the volume the situation and also the uh, the mood of the communicator so this was the sound symbols the next is the symbolic code language what exactly it means many times some special code language can also be used as an effective mode for the desired communication the special code language which is prepared through the help of various gestures postures and body movements can be used for communicating with a person who is having uh, like hearing impairment or maybe a person who is uh, not able to understand uh, the languages which are or not able to, to to hear so or maybe a person who is not knowing that language so here you may see that uh, like you can actually make a judgment that what will be the most effective way of communication in that particular situation you must have seen that news uh, telecast which is for uh, the the mute and deaf people so one can also mix the vocal cues and sound symbols with the body language for having a code language so there is a particular code which can be prepared to showcase a particular word so we are making certain movements up by our hands like it in case of sign language we if we are trying to say a word there is a particular sign for it so here we can say that it is because this the sign language is commonly shared and it should be understood by everybody so there should be a universal meaning to it and every user would be in a position to understand so that is why the users who are the either the senders or the receivers they are free to invent any set of code language which can be used uh, by any type of verbal and non verbal symbols commonly shared among uh, among these people but in case of a sign language when there is we are talking about a sign language then the the coding of that particular language is very much uh, it is typical and it is uh, very kind of formal so that is not uh, going to change throughout the world but in case of like if we are talking and if we are making certain uh, actions or we are using some sort of uh, symbolic uh, some symbols we are trying to make through our uh, hand or through our uh, eyes or maybe 
um, we are trying to make some sort of indication that can change according to the understanding of one person and the other. In our day-to-day -day life, we must have heard some uh, like children and youngsters often they go for uh, like when once they are playing, they they use different type of code languages. And at times for elders or those who are not the part of that group are not able to understand or sense that what they are trying to convey. But the group within uh, the group, because the, uh, the meaning of that particular code is understood by the group. So they will be in a position to make out that what is being said. But what is the meaning of that particular sound which is being made by the member of like by one of the members of the group. So here we can see that how important this symbolic code language is. Even in case of the formal organizations like the army or the military or any such type of organization, these type of code words or code sounds and code actions are being used for making the communications because of the secrecy of the messages. And similarly, various types of well thought and organized code languages are very effectively used in exchanging very meaningful and secret information by the detective and security agencies who are operating throughout the world. So in this way, any commonly shared code language may prove uh, to be an effective mode for the desired communication between the shared group of members. So that is why it is also considered to be a very sound kind of symbol, like a means of uh, non-verbal communication, uh, which can happen uh, during uh, a communication between groups or individuals. So now let us summarize what we have studied today. We saw that communication uh, can be categorized into various types in view of the different criteria adopted for this purpose, like for the categorization purpose. And in view of the media and channels which are utilized for communication, we can say that there are uh, verbal and nonverbal communications then we can also say that there are natural and mechanical communication. And from the viewpoints of the persons involved and the situations prevailed at the time of communication, it may be categorized as one-to-one -one communication, small group communication, large group or uh, public communication, organizational or institutional communication, and mass communication. We've also emphasized a lot on the classroom practices in the classroom situations, how the communication, which may be verbal or nonverbal, or maybe in different forms of nonverbal communication or verbal communication, how they make uh, an effort for making this classroom teaching and learning process very much effective and impressive. So this was all about today's uh, session. And I hope that uh, the topic which is uh, discussed today is uh, comprehended to you all. And I hope that uh, maybe in another sessions and another topics of the same uh, major uh, area of communication, you will be uh, comprehending more about the aspects of communication. So for today, this was uh, all. These are a few of those references and suggested links which were used while uh, making or uh, developing this particular lecture. You can also go ahead and read more. And uh, this is all for today. Let us see each other in another session another time. Thank you so much. Dear learners, you were watching a video on communication and interaction. And in this lecture, we discussed on the types of communication. This video lecture was recorded by faculty at home during the homebound situation of COVID-19 pandemic using minimal technical resources. Technical errors, if any, are unintentional and may please be ignored. For any queries with regard to this lecture or broadcast, kindly send your email to techsupport at dth.ac.in. Thank you so much.